capacitor and inductor capacitor including semiconductors no? like uh, diodes um transistors and also IC na po yung uh, ano natin i-discuss natin for the electrical components okay Let's start first one we're going to discuss is Ang yung ano. Okay, so we have resistor. Ito po yung symbol ng resistor. This is for the US and Japan na ano, accepted na symbol ng resistor. So ito yung fix. Then we have the variable resistors. Then for the Europe, which is the IEC na standard na resistor, so ito po yung symbols niya. So parang ano lang, um, rectangle. No? So ang nakasanayan natin is yung sa ano, symbol for Kasi the symbol for US and Japan yung nakasanaya natin na uh, symbol for sisters. Okay. So we have the different types of resistor. So we have here the table for that one. Uh, resistors could be carbon composition, ceramic, carbon film, metal film, metal oxide film, ceramic, wire wound, and foil. So sa Ito yung kanyang mga ano, yung, uh, resistance. No? So, the smallest resistor is ano, yung may pinakamaliit na uh, resistance which is usually used for elect uh, electronic components. No? Ito yung kanyang mga, ano, mga, mga voltage range. No? For ceramic and wire wounds, kaya na hanggang 60 kV at 89 kV. The metal oxide naman which is usually used for uh, transmission system 37.5 kb and for metal film is 10 kb you just familiarize with this one kasi ang kailangan sa itatanong dito is ano yung pinakamaliit na resistor at ano din yung pinakamalaki okay then we have metal oxide varistor so this is the first type of resistor po na ating discuss so, a metal oxide varistor or an MOV is a special type of resistor. Special type of resistor that changes uh, its resistance with the Changes its resistance with the rise in voltage, the very high resistance at low voltage naman, no? So it usually acts as a switch. It is usually used for short circuit protection in power strips or lighting volt arrestors on street poles or as a snubber in inductive circuits. Then we have variable resistors. The variable resistor is a resistor whose value can be adjusted by turning a shaft or sliding a control. They are also called potentiometers or rheostats and allow the resistance of the device to alter by hand. No? So a, a rheostat, a variable resistor with two terminals, one fixed and one sliding. So it is used with high currents. So a potentiometer, which is also a common type of variable resistors, it is usually used for amplification of audio and other forms of amplifiers. No? So, yung rheostat is for high current purposes, habang yung potentiometer naman is for is for um, audio or ampli amplification purposes.
Then you have thermistor. So thermistor is a temperature dependent resistor. So ibig sabihin ito, its um, resistance changes by the temperature coefficient. No? So a positive temperature coefficient, resistor is resistor with a positive temperature coefficient, meaning ang resistance will rise when the temperature of the no, when the temperature of the um, resistor will also rise. So, kapag tumaas yung temperature, tataas din yung resistance. No? So, it is usually used for um, tawag doon, for division sets. No? And also, specialized version is only used for self-repairing fuse. No? So, ibig sabihin, when that fuse will be ano, um, busted, no? so it will, it will repair itself no? habang bumababa yung temperature. We have the NTC, a negative temperature coefficient resistor which is a, te uh, a thermistor na kung saan kapag bumaba yung temperature, tataas yung resistance. So, the exact opposite of a PTC or the po uh, po positive temperature coefficient na thermistor. So, a sensistor is a semiconductor based resistor with a negative temperature coefficient useful in compensating for temperature induced effects in electronic circuit. No? So, it's like a diode semiconductor siya na resistor no? na negative ang kanyang temperature coefficient and it is usually useful in electronic circuits. Then we have resistor color coding. So, dito natin malalaman how we are going to read uh, common types of resistor. Okay. So we have the four band actual resistor na ano na uh, coding. So the four band resistor coding uh, uses four colors, no, or four band of colors. Then the scheme is very simple. So the first two number, the first two significant digit ng value ng resistance. The third is the multiplier, and the fourth is the tolerance. No, the yung value per yeah, per color, no, we have black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, white, gold, silver, and no band. So, if in case yung black is nalagay sa first band, so the value of that one is zero. Kapag second band naman zero, tapos ang multiplier uh, is one. No, Kanyari, uh, black, black dito, so tapos black then so 0 0 times 0 so the resistance is equal to 0 no so yung brown is 2 red orange a uh, red is uh, yung brown is 1 yung 2 is red no orange 3 yellow 4 green ay yung 5 6 the uh, blue violet 7 8 is gray at yung 9 is white to so yung ano uh, gold silver at no band that is for the tolerance so 5% for gold 10% for silver and 20% for 
kapag wala siyang ano pang-apat na color no pang-apat na band okay for example the color ito green so green is 5 blue is 6 so we have 56 then the third color will be the multiplier yellow so 56 yung yellow is 10 so 56 times 10k so that is equal to 500 uh, 5000 600 ohms or 560 kilo ohms. Tapos, gold yung last that is 5%. So, ang value ng resistance na to is 560 kilo ohms plus and minus 5% yung kanyang tolerance. Okay? So, meron tayong 5 band. 5 band, ang pinagkaiba sa 4 band is meron siyang pang tatlong digit, no? Pang third significant digit. The third band is the third digit, no? So, for this one, red, so that is 2. Yung blue natin is 6, so we have 2, 6. Yung third is black, so 260. Yung pang-apat na will be the multiplier, which is, this is, ano ba to? Uh, this is gold, so 0.1, no? Ang kanyang multiplier for gold. So, we have uh, 260 times 0.1, so that is 26, no? 26, and the tolerance is uh, the tolerance is silver, so 10%. So, we have 26 ohms plus and minus 10% na tolerance. Then we have inductor, no? So, inductor are also called oil choke or reactor so an inductor is a passive electrical component that stores electrical energy in a magnetic field no? then um, inductors are used in wide uh, applications electronic no so power suppliers uh, power supplies filters and amplifiers it is also commonly used in transformer no which uses the transfer of electrical energy from one circuit to another so this is the principle behind uh, inductor so it stores uh, energy in its magnetic field no so when the source of current or that is electrons is removed so ang nato ang na store dito na electrical energy will also collapse no so uh, uh, for this one it is compared to a capacitor yung capacitor kasi that will store also um, charge in its electric field but unlike the inductor, kapag nawala yung source, the charge will still be there, no? Di siya mawawala. Kasi yung electric field will not collapse. For this one, the magnetic field will collapse. So yung na store dito na electrical energy will also be um, gone, no? Or mawawala. Discharge. Okay, so the unit for um, inductor, no? Yung kanyang value ng kanyang inductance is in Henry. So, an Henry is the intensity of magnetic field that is produced. So, sa electronics, the typical value of the inductance is millihenry or microhenry. Para sa electrical naman, so usually, in ano, in an AC circuit, so ang ginagamit natin, the value is Henry. Minsan din, if that is for um, resonant frequency, you know, so meron tayong mga millihenry. So, bihila, bihila lang uh, uh, dumating yung ano, or or bababa yung value ng ating inductance into micro henry. Okay, so the inductor So there are uh, many types of inductor depending on its medium, no kung ano yung nasa gitna niya. So meron, meron tayong air wound, so dito wala siyang ano sa ano gitna. Meron din tayong per permeable material or magnetic material so iron or ano or ferrite or ferrous na steel pwede yang gamitin as the core no kung saan doon natin inaano um dapat yung ating coil of wire pwede din siya toroidal ganito so that is steel and inductor so the inductance of an inductor will depend on this following factor so the number of coils so the the Higher the number of coils, no? Mas madami ang kanyang, ano? Ang kanyang, or mas mataas ang kanyang inductance. Yung, yung laki ng diameter. So, the, the larger the diameter, the, ano? The, the, 
higher the inductance, spacing between. So, pag medyo malapit ang spacing niya, so, mataas din yung inductance. Yung size na ginagamit, no? So, the larger the size of the wire used for, to create an inductor, so, mas mataas na yung inductance. Tapos, yung type of material, no? Sa, ano, sa gitna. If that is air or yung, ano, uh, iron or soft iron. So, this is the voltage on an inductor. So, the formula is... Voltage is equal to the inductance times the current divided by the time, wherein your uh, self-inductance, so ang unit nito is in Henry, tapos yung current amperes, yung time T must be in seconds. Okay, so we have the different types of inductors. Okay, so in an air core inductor, the core is completely not present and gives high reluctance pathway to the magnetic flux, thus less inductance. These types of inductor have superior coils to generate higher flux densities. So the application of air core inductor include in high frequency applications such as TV and also radio receivers. So yan, no? so ito yung symbol for an air core conductor. So yung gitna niya is space lang or air lang yung kanyang ano core, no? So it is usually used in a TV and radio receiver. So this is the very most common type of inductor. In ferromagnetic or ion core inductor. So ferromagnetic or ion core inductors have high inductance property due to their higher magnetic per permeability. So, these type of inductors are high power inductors but incomplete in higher frequency due to the current losses, namely the AD current and the hysteresis loss. So, the AD current and the hysteresis, hysteresis loss are due to the magnetic no? the, the magnetic effect of the core ng ating inductor. So, the best type of this inductor is the transformer. No? Uh, the, transformer natin. So it is the application for this one is for power frequency 50 hertz no sa mga building na surge voltages. Tapos sa audio frequency ang kanyang ano kaya na frequency or the range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz as ano audio as EF chocks no for tone controls. Tapos uh, if it is used alongside a capacitor so it will be use as filters no in power supply so that is to normalize the ano the output voltage sa mga power supplies spirit core inductor so these are different types of um, inductors which offer advantage to decrease cost and low core at high frequencies so ferrite is a metal oxide ceramic based on the ferric oxide the FO203 then some ferrites are used for construction to reduce hysteresis loss. So I unlike dong kanina sa ating ano ferromagnetic, so yung ferrite natin na ano core inductors. So they are usually um, have low hysteresis loss. No, so they they are more efficient compared to the ano the ferromagnetic. The application, so kaya pwede siyang gamitin at high and medium frequencies, used for switching of the circuit. So, pwede siya gamitin as radio interference operation, filter chocks, tapos yung TV raster generation. Then, you have the toroidal. So, ito. So, nakabilog siya. So, this is a coil natin is nakawon in a toroidal circular form. So, the advent, advantage for this one is the flux leakage is very low. So, however, special winding machines are required to design this type of So, ito mas mahilap siya i-construct. So sometimes ferrite core is used to decrease the losses in the design, no? So this type of inductor are usually used for medical devices, switching regulators, industrial controllers, and output filters. Then we have the bobbin base inductor. So the bobbin base inductor, the coil is bonded in a bobbin. So ito yung kanyang ano design, no? So this is widely used for power rating, voltage, and current levels, and also in operating frequency. So, they are most used for switching mode of your power supplies or power conversion application. So, the most common type or the most common applications for this one is in input and output filters. 
and for power adapter like applications. Then you have the multi-layer inductor. So a multi-layer inductor includes two conductive coil patterns which are set in two layers in the upper part of a multi-layered body. So meaning ito, ito yung itsura niya. So this is commonly found ngayon sa, ano natin, sa mga cellphone natin, yung mga uh, circuit board ng ating cellphone. So these are, uh, this is the smallest type of inductor. No? Okay, so this, the application for this one is for small wearable applications. So katulad ng mga, ano, mga, like the smartwatch, yung mga Apple Watch. So for Wi-Fi applications, for Bluetooth, for system-based chips, and especially sa mga motherboards. That is a multi-layer inductor yung mga ginagamit sa ganun. Then you have the thin film inductor. So they are, uh, they are entirely different from the usual chip type conductor, which uh, won with copper wire. So, they are used also in conjunction with the, ano, the multi-layer conductor. So, they are used for uh, mobile application, for your for Wi-Fi, power supplies, amplify, amplifiers, auxiliators, and impedance matching. Okay, so we have action inductors or coloring, coloring inductor. A coloring inductor, also known as a color code inductor or a coloring inductor, is a self-inducting component together with a capacitor. So the inductance coil coloring inductance creates a filter circuit. No? Then the applications, so it is used as line filter, filter design, or boost converter. Then we have the shielded surface mount inductor. So it is built by a winding a length of wire, a cylindrical bobbin. So katulad pa rin siya ng bobbin, but this, the, ano niya, yung kanyang body is shielded with a certain, um, tawag doon, coating, no? So this is usually used for, ano, for electronic purposes. So PDA, yung mga pole converters, then high current transformers or power supplies. In battery power devices, so DC, DC to DC converters and DC to DC converters na may kasama siyang PLC. Then we have the wireless charging. So ito yung pinaka pinakabagong type of inductor ngayon, which is usually used in our um, cell phones. No? Yung mga iPhone or mga ano, Samsung phone na may wireless charging. So basically, that is just an inductor which works in ano, electromagnetic na, ano, na, na induction. So kaya nag-charge. Nag Kasi yung charging, ano, yung charging pad, meron siyang ano, isang... Um, tawag doon, uh, ganito na wireless charging coil, tapos yung sa likod ng cellphone din is may ano din, uh, wireless charging coil so when they come in contact so same yung principle niya sa transformer no? the, the transfer of um, electrical, electrical energy through its magnetic field okay. then you have the variable inductor, so the variable inductor is, is katulad ng resistor na pwede nating baguhin yung kanyang resistance so they are usually used or high frequency application. No? So, um, the usual uh, type of um, inductor na nagiging variable is the the uh, ferromagnetic and the air core na mga inductor. No? Yung maliliit kasi ng inductor, mahilap siyang gawing variable because we, uh, it is hard to adjust no, the uh, inductance. Kasi yung mismong connection ng ano, coil no, ang binabago when it comes to variable Inductors. So chalk, so chalk is usually used for AC application that is used for blocking high frequency alternating current electrical circuit while allowing no, DC or the low frequency signal to pass. So this is usually used to block harmonic voltages. No? So ito yung mga ano, uh, part of the component doon sa ating mga variable frequency drives and mga power supplies which uh, uh, mimic or try to uh, have a smooth output voltage. Okay. So, 
an inductor with with each which is supplied by the DC current so it will you know, increase its you know, magnetic field that opposes current flow so meaning when you put DC current in uh, an inductor so the current flow is minimum so ang mangyayari kapag ano na kapag na activate or na kuha na niya ang kanyang ano, magnetic field so so the current on the circuit flowing will be at its minimum so na, na, na maintain na yung flow ng ating current now when the source is removed so the magnetic field collapse tapos ang mangyayari yung open yung, yung open circuit voltage ng ating inductor will be a very high voltage Okay, so the energy stored in an inductor is this formula. So we have W is equal to 1 half Li squared. Where in W is the energy stored in Joule. Yung L natin is inductance in Henry. And yung I natin is current in amperes. Then we go to capacitor. No? So capacitor. So we have first this uh, mga, no, mga definition. So dielectric is an insulating material and a dielectric constant of an insulator measures the ability of an insulator to store energy in its electric field. Kasi yung nasa gitna ng ating ano, capacitor, kunyari this will be our capacitor. Pagana yung ano. Then ko. Yan. Yan. So it, Yung capacitor natin sa loob, may dalawang plate yan. Yung sa gitna, depending on the type of the material, yung sa gitna yan, that, that will be your dielectric. So, it is basically an insulator no? When, wherein if a specific amount of voltage no, will be applied to each plate, no? sa end to end ng plate na to, so it will cause the insulator to break and become a, hold on, become an conductor. No? So, kaya may tatawag tayong breakdown voltage. So, that is the voltage at which an insulator will become an inductor. And that is um, what we also called as a function of the dielectric constant. So, it is a constant. No? Hindi yan na babago because that will depend on the material that is being used. So, relative permittivity, also known as dielectric constant, so that is the ratio of the material, the, di, the, the ratio of the di, dielectric constant or the permittivity of the material compared to the permit, permittivity of a vacuum. So if that is, ano, that is the lower the, per, the permittivity, so the higher the breakdown voltage. No? So, ibig sabihin nun, mas malakas siya or mas mataas siya na insulator. But the higher the permittivity, so it it will only require smaller voltage, a small amount of voltage to become an inductor or to become an conductor. Okay, so the absolute permittivity, so this is the permittivity of a certain material. No? We have Coulomb's law. So Coulomb inverse law or simply Coulomb's law, law that quantifies the force between two stationary electrically charged particles. So, ibig sabihin, when we have two charges, so each charge will exert a magnetic force between each other. So, there is a computation for that, but that will be, yan, uh, kasama na yan dun sa, ano, sa exam for electrical engineering, which is uh, hindi na siya scope talaga ng ano, RME. The first law of electrostatics, so the law, the first law of electrostatics uh, states that like charges uh, repel, and unlike charges attract. Second law naman is the force between two charges is directly proportional to their to the value of their charge and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So this is the formula for capacitance. So I believe na discuss na natin to last time, no? So capacitance is equal to charge over the voltage. Okay, so the physical construction of a capacitor. So the capacitors are rated in the amount of charge that can be held. So that is in farad, no? yung kanyang capacitance. The voltage handling capabilities. No? So, so that's makikita natin doon yung kung ilan yung voltage niya. So that is the voltage rating. So that is the 
voltage handling capabilities in which kapag lumagpas siya dun sa voltage na yun, yung kapasitor natin is sasabog na or masisira. Then the insulating material between them, so either that is mecha, electrolytic, um, uh, dun, um, ceramic, no? aluminum, so that that will depend on the type of um, insulating material na ginamit sa gitna ng plate. So, the capacitor's ability to hold charge will depend on the conductive plate surface, the space between the plate and the material between the plates. So, the, the, the narrow the spacing, so mas mataas ang kanyang uh, electric field, so it will also hold a um, large amount of charge. No? So, the bigger the area of the conducting plate, so mas taas din yung kanyang capacitance. Okay, so the properties of the capacitor, so the dielectric strength is the strength of the insulating material. The dielectric breakdown is the failure of the ano, insulating material to prevent flow of the current between the two plates. So ito yung tawag breakdown voltage or dielectric breakdown. Then dissipation factor is the capacitor. Uh, the, the dissipation factor of capacitor is the power loss when AC is applied through capacitor. So if if a capacitor is nakalagay ang kanyang, kanyang dissipation factor so it, it is much better that your capacitor has a lower dissipation factor ibig sabihin noon mas konti ang kanyang power loss okay so we have the different types of capacitor first we have the electrolytic it could be aluminum or tantalum so it is polarized no ibig sabihin uh, meron siyang positive-negative terminal. Kapag nabaliktad, it will cause the capacitor to explode. No? Then we have the film capacitors. So they are also known as uh, plastic film, film dielectric capacitor, or polymer film capacitors. So they are usually used for um, AC voltage application without DC bias. No? So And they are also um, not temperature dependent so ibig sabihin uh, if in case uminit siya hindi hindi magkakaroon ng effect sa kanyang capacitance and also has a low dissipation factor so the film capacitors are not polarized so meaning uh, wala siyang positive negative terminal no? so it it can be installed either way in an application ceramic capacitor is a fixed value na capacitor so ang kanyang material sa gitna ay ceramic so yung tawag siyang ceramic capacitor it is constructed of two or more alternating layers of ceramics. So the composition of the ceramic will define the behavior and therefore the applications of this capacitor. So it is usually used no, in conjunction with the, ano, the mecha na capacitor. So we have two types of ceramic capacitor according to their classes. So the type of ceramic is also the type of class na nakaano sa kanya naka tawag daw naka classify so class 1 so they are most or they are uh, they, they will offer high stability at low losses for resonance circuit application and class 2 naman is high volumetric efficiency for buffer bypass and coupling applications of our electrical circuits so yung mga breakdown no for each of the type of capacitor ang kanyang permittivity ang kanyang dielectric strength so meaning this is the voltage at which no our insulating material or our ano yung ating material sa gitna will begin to burn or to break down so the thickness of the plate ito yung range ng kanyang pag doon capacitance ito ang kanyang dissipation factor okay so the capacitor behavior in dc so when connected to DC, the capacitor charges and holds the charge as long as the DC voltage is applied. So ibig sabihin, the charge of a capacitor will um, hold, no? Kahit pa mula yung kanyang DC voltage, uh, ano lang siya kapag inano natin, it is charge. So the capacitor is essentially blocks DC current. Hindi niya pinapadaan yung DC current ating circuit no yung ano yung inductor it will maintain no, the value of the current yung ano naman capacitor it will block the dc current okay 
Ito yung mga typical values for our capacitance. So, micro, nano, and pico. No? So, we, we usually use millifarad no? doon na sa mga application sa mga distribution system or sa mga transmission system. Okay, so the energy stored in a capacitor is equal to 1 half C is squared, wherein our C is the capacitance and our voltage is in volts. Yung ating W, that is the energy stored, which is in Joule. Okay, then you have other electrical components. So we have diode. So diode is a semiconductor device that is essentially act as a one-way switch. No? So it is on state kapag forward ang kanyang bias. No? Forward bias. So meaning forward bias, yung positive na source it is also connected sa positive na terminal ng diode. No? Yung negative sa negative. So that is essentially forward bias or on. Kapag off, so that is reverse. No? Yung positive nakakonek sa negative na terminal ng diode at yung negative nakakonek sa positive terminal ng diode. The transistor are just two diodes that is uh, no that is connected to each other. So you could have two types of trans, trans uh, transistor that is NPN or ENP. No? So depending on the applications. So it is usually used as switch gate or for amplification. Then we have integrated circuits. It's just a group of capacitor that could perform no that could perform um a uh, certain amount of um, amplification or logic circuit no or logic logic gate that is an integrated circuit and the vacuum tube is the earliest form of electronic device or the most or the oldest form of a transistor vacuum tube so the it is usually used to amplify the current flow, no? so this is used for uh, older versions of TV, radio, and um, tagdon mga other electronic devices, no. So the cathode is heated in a light bulb, so it will emit electrons. Okay, yeah. So semiconductor term, so forward biasing. So ito sabi ko na kanina, the diode is forward bias if that is connected positive, positive, negative, negative. Reverse bias kapag positive, negative negative positive yung doping is that is a intentional introduction to on of ano impurities no to a certain semiconductor to increase its um its conductivity or its properties no either that is for electrical optical or structural purposes so hole is an absence of electron in a particular place in an atom so if may nagtransfer na atom from from a certain atom to another, so in an in an electronic term, ang tawag doon sa naiwan na space na yun is a hole. In the emitter, so that is the terminal of the transistor which is heavily duped as compared to the two, which is base and collector. So the emitter will supply the charge carrier. Yung base naman, so that is an extremely small region of a transistor. Yung collector naman is the part of the ano, transistor na uh, the, ano, nasa middle yung kanyang, um, tagdaw, ng kanyang region. No? So it is usually used to combine the properties between the emitter and the base and will give also the amplification. Okay, so amplification is the process to increase the magnitude of a signal. So either... It will increase the current, the voltage, or the power. So, that is amplification. Then we have power electronics. So, that is the application of electronics to control and conversion of electrical power. No? So, ngayon, uh, yung, ano, yung ating mga, mga gamit no? sa distribution system are all electronics. No? So, that is part of power electronics. Then, active component who requires a source of energy, typically in the form of direct current, in order to perform this specific function. So, an electrical component is an active component kapag gumagamit siya ng kuryente. No? So, meaning it, it use uh, current to perform its function. Passive naman if that if it just only allow no, the current to flow. No? So, hindi niya ginagamit yung current but just um, doon, um, but just allow the current to flow through the circuit. So, we have here the 
types of active and passive. So, yung ating transistor, diode, lead, photodiode, IC, op-amp, then itong, ano, itong counter natin, also na 7 segment display and the battery are all active electrical components. Yung passive natin is our resistor, LDR natin, so that is just light dependent resistor, the thermistor, capacitor, inductor, switch, variable resistor, and also our transformer. So do, those are passive components. Okay, and so we will take a break muna siguro for 8 minutes. No, We'll be back at 9 a.m. Tapos we will have this multiple choice question. Okay, so break muna tayo for 8 minutes. Okay. So yan, so balik tayo no. Terms no na kailangan tandaan when it comes to electrical components no. Yung application para saan for this type of capacitor or resistor no para saan yung kanyang gamit no. So yun yung ano mahirap for electrical. Oh, yung ano magkakaroon po tayo ng pre-board for the technical subject at yung para po 